This is GTV. No, 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 no. Skip the intro and come right to me because I found something you're gonna love. This Pepsi Man toys sealed in the box. We're gonna open it. We're gonna unbox it. We're gonna see exactly what this is in here. But if you don't know what Pepsi Man is, take a look at this. Pepsi Man, a guy in a costume who creates awareness of Pepsi. Pepsi Man was big in Japan during the 1990s and 2000s, and the premise is very simple. Some people want some Pepsi, and Pepsi Man delivers. He usually gets halfway killed along the way, too. There were also variations of Pepsi Man based on flavor and can design, and even a Pepsi woman. The character was so popular he made the inevitable crossover into the video game world. In 1999, he got his very own game for the Sony PlayStation called, surprise, Pepsi Man. It's basically an advertisement wrapped around a cheap PlayStation game. But actually, Pepsi Man reached critical mass after his run in Japan was over, thanks to YouTube, as so-called reactors would gawk over how strange and weird Japan must be to have video games about Pepsi. None of them are any good. Out of the 781,129 videos about Pepsi Man, no one actually tries to dissect the commercials, or CMs as they're known here, and explain what makes them so weird exactly. I mean, yes, it's funny to see someone in a goofy costume breaking their neck, but that's like saying only Japan has weird CMs and everywhere else on Earth junk food and tchotchkes are advertised for in a serious manner. But amidst all the unenthusiastic reacting of the 781,129 videos out there, the most obvious thing is missed. Pepsi Man, who works for Pepsi in Japan, doesn't seem to be in Japan at all. Everyone is American. Despite that, they still speak Japanese, but with an American accent. Oh wow, is that what I sound like? Oh man. The other thing people miss is that the popularity of Pepsi Man led to some nifty giveaways. Bottle toppers, Pepsi dispensers, even space station crew jackets? No wonder they say Japan always gets the best stuff. Well, one of the items they gave away amongst all this was this neat little box I picked up. What mysteries are inside? And most importantly, will it even work? It's time to send it back to studio for an unboxing. So we've got the box here and it doesn't look like something that you can buy in a store. I don't see any barcode or any kind of special marking that showed the price or anything like that. It might have been a giveaway, it might have been a premium or something like that. I really don't know, but we're going to open it up and find out. And this thing has been sealed for a very long time. This came out in 2000 and it's never been opened, so here we go. And I had some trouble getting the box open. It was sealed really tight. I've probably ruined the collectability of this. There's probably some guy out there right now looking for this, cursing me out. Oh, and there's a lot of pieces in here. I was not expecting this. I was expecting maybe something you could piece together with two pieces, snap it on. It did come with instructions and it did come with this little card that says congratulations for winning the Toko Toko can helper. So it must have been a prize giveaway. Okay, so we take a look at the instructions and I'm surprised to find out there's no written text, just little pictures and six steps. And it looks like number one and two are really difficult. I don't know if we can do this, but once we get past number three, it looks like it's pretty easy to finish up. So the first step, you have to connect the wind-up gear with the legs. And you have to line everything up into these little slots. Pretty tricky. You gotta put it together and hold it so it doesn't fall apart. And now we've got the body, and the front and the back have little slots and grooves, 
and holes where everything can snap in together. Of course, this has to be the front, right? So everything locks into place, and there's a pin that holds the parts from part one and part two together. And simply snap the back on. Very nice. Okay, so we finished one and two. Time to move on to step three and four. Looks like step three is putting the cart, the tray together. Only three pieces here, and it looks pretty simple. You snap the wheels on, and you snap the handle on, and then you snap Diet Pepsi Woman on at the end. Now I had to stop tape for about five minutes because the hands were very hard to snap onto the handle. It kept slipping and popping off. It took a really long time. For some reason, it was really hard to do. Okay, so let's go back to the instructions. Now we've got step five and step six. Pretty simple, all we have to do is put a can on wind her up and let her go. So I went down the street and I got myself a can of Pepsi here. It's the only can I could find out of all the vending machines out on the street. It's actually a very big size. It's 650 milliliters, which they did not have in the year 2000, I don't think. My memory's not so great. Uh, it might be a little too heavy to push, Let's put it on here, wind it up, and see how it goes. Uh, it doesn't move. Let's wind it up all the way and try again. There we go. Much better. So there you go, a neat little giveaway from 18 years ago. And I found this at a recycle shop not that far away from my house. It's only 500 yen. If you saw the video I made about two years ago with the pink plastic princess throne that cost several thousand dollars, it's the same place. So if you're walking around in Japan, take a look in some shops, you never know what you're gonna find. If you like this video, click on one of the buttons you see here. 